and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this video, I'm going to show you what I did for Inktober of week three, and I'm also going to show you how to do the painting that I did for Inktober of week four. If you don't know what Inktober is, Inktober is a challenge that was created by illustrator Jake Parker and what you're supposed to do is make a pen and ink drawing every day for the month of October. Now you can do the partial challenge which is what I did and you can either draw paintings every other day or once a week and so I did paintings once a week. So for week three I did this painting of a witch sitting or floating above a tree. And I did this part in Sketchbook Pro for Android. And I went ahead and just sketched out the, the whole painting. And then I used it as a photo reference for a traditional material drawing that I did. And I did this using all the materials that I got in my October Art Snacks subscription box. And if you want to see what all was in that box, I have a link to my Wix blog down below. But this is the painting that I did using those materials. And they had a lot of ink and they had some green ink. And they had several different kinds of pins. And so I went ahead and sketched that out. And did that as my traditional materials contribution to Inktober. Then for week four of Inktober, I did a painting of the Headless Horseman and I used Sketchbook Pro for windows. And this is what this video is going to be about. I'm going to show you how I did this Headless Horseman painting. Now if you want to follow along traditionally you can use your favorite kind of watercolor, any of your kind of pens that you like, Stadler pens, Micron Pigma pens, there's Stabilo pens, there's tons of different kinds of pens, just whatever your favorite brand is, go ahead and follow along using those materials. So I wanted to test and see just how traditional of a look we could get by using Sketchbook Pro for Windows. So I went ahead and I imported my Headless Horseman sketch that I did in Infinite Painter on my Android tablet. And I went ahead and imported it into Sketchbook Pro on my Surface Pro 3. And then I drew this old gnarled tree in the background because I wanted to make it look like he's, it's real spooky and he's in a spooky forest, and which is what the original story was about, the legend of Sleepy Hollow. He was in a forest and it was real spooky looking and at night. So... I found some photo references on pixabay.com where they have royalty free photos and I'm also using the program Pure Ref which is a program that floats above other programs and you can load your photo refs in it and you can put a whole bunch of different ones in there at once and it's also a free program and it's really nice. And so I went ahead and looked for some photo references of old spooky trees and old spooky forests. And I just wanted to kind of get a, a look for the background there, like what the trees would look like way back in the background. But they're not going to be the dominant feature except for the old dead tree in the picture. So here I went ahead and... I was looking through all the brush sets and as you can see there's a lot of brush sets and you can download all these brush sets from the Sketchbook Pro website. And there are different kinds. There's a watercolor one which is what I was looking for and there's also some that were specifically designed for Inktober. And there's designer brushes and several different kinds. So I thought I would try one of these texture brushes and this is a new feature that uh, Sketchbook Pro has added this year is texture, br texture brushes. And so you can kind of get sort of a canvas look 
when you use these brushes. So I decided to try a Inktober brush and I didn't like that look. So I found the watercolor category that they have and I used the fan brush to kind of do the background. And you can do this when you follow along traditionally. Just take your big flat wash brush and make a nice blue wash over your pencil drawing. And in this program, it kind of covers it up. So I'll have to go back and, and erase that out. But if you're doing this traditionally, it won't cover it up. You should be able to see your drawing on the paper. The, the pencil line should faintly show through because watercolor is a transparent medium. So that shouldn't be any problem. But when you're doing this digitally, you kind of have to work a little bit different because Digital painting is not exactly the same as traditional painting. You have to do different steps to get a different look. So here I'm using the blending brush and I erased out my uh, drawing there where I could see it better and make sure your drawing is on a separate layer or you won't be able to do this. So that's one of the things you definitely have to remember when you're working digitally is to keep it on a separate layer. And so then I wanted to work on the background trees and I made some sketches of some trees in the background with a light gray color and you can do this traditionally too. Just take your thin script brush and go ahead and take a light gray and paint around your horseman figure and just add those into the background. And then for the old gnarled tree that's in the front, we want a little bit of a darker color. So take a dark gray. You might throw in some brown to it just to kind of warm that color up. But we want it to be kind of dark looking and spooky. We, we don't want it to be real warm and friendly because we're trying to come across with a a really spooky atmosphere and it's supposed to be at night so we want it dark looking and all the trees dark and that's why I went with a blue color for the background too. I just wanted it to look eerie and foggy and not quite natural and I decided against using a green color because it just might be too bright. I kind of wanted a just kind of a darker blue just to give it that foggy look and almost almost look natural but not quite like there's something just a little bit wrong and sometimes that's even scarier than a real in your face type of color like green or something so that's just kind of the atmosphere that I wanted to project here and I'm going ahead and making the real gnarled and twisted branches on this tree and putting a lot of old branches on it just to give it character so that it looks like a really old tree and you can use dark gray and if you're following along traditionally use your script brush and make those branches with that you can make the main trunk a little bit with maybe a, a bigger round brush if you want to to save time and in here I'm just kind of trying to get sort of the, the shape of the branches. I just want them to look really spooky and scary. Kind of like that picture that, that I have for the photo reference. And it's real gnarled looking and scary and everything. And so then I wanted to go ahead and work on the horse a little bit. And so again make another layer so that if there's any mistakes or something that you can go back and fix that. Now if you're following along traditionally of course it's harder to fix your mistakes so you try to be really careful and just take a really small brush, a small round brush and this is where it helps to have a very good drawing because then you can just take your paint and follow along the lines and get the shape of your horse and it will stay correct as long as you have a good foundation drawing. So that's why I like to have 
a really good drawing for the foundation when I do watercolor and ink. And I'm using a little bit darker gray again and almost black. We kind of want him to be black, but have a little bit of gray because we want to be able to show a little bit of some highlights on his muscles and and sort of show his structure. So I'm just going to go ahead and and go over everything with one of the watercolor brushes that's in Sketchbook Pro here and it, it made a pretty nice watercolor look but I'm going to have to go back and blend it I can tell so that's what I had to do and if you're doing this traditionally and you need to blend just add more water and do it at the time that you put the paint down because when it dries sometimes it, it will stain the paper and you won't be able to go back and change it so just make sure when you want to make a softer stroke when you're falling along traditionally to add more water right at the time that you put the stroke down now when you're doing this digitally you can go back any time and change that so I went ahead and did a dark blue for the the writer's clothes and I'm using some pictures that I got from Pixabay and I really like the the costume that these guys are wearing it it fits my need for what I wanted the writer to look like and so I went ahead and colored that in and then in sketchbook pro I went ahead and picked one of the blending brushes in the watercolor category in this category I think you have to download this watercolor one I'm not sure it might actually come with the the main program but anyway, it works quite well when you go ahead and start with the, the bristle blender and go back. And that gives it the watercolory look that, that you want here. And I just went ahead and softened all the marks on the rider and the horse. Just kind of giving him a misty, foggy look too. Because he's supposed to be ghostly looking. So we want that atmosphere to trans translate over to the rider and the horse as well and also the tree I went back and and smudged the tree a little bit I left some rough strokes because we want to kind of give it a a bark like look on the tree but I also smudged it in a little because we want it to have a misty look like it's a, the tree is in the mist in the night there. And so it's not quite real clear looking. So that just goes, that gives it that look when you use that blender. And again, if you're following along traditionally, do that right when you add the strokes down. And I wanted to give him a red eye and a red nostril on the horse and the rider kind of a pale green arm just to give it, ghostly look or a corpse like look and then I'm painting in the pumpkin just a little bit laying down the orange base and then you can go back later and and darken it on the sides and I'm just trying to get that shape and then you just go ahead and keep doing that and try to, to work on the shape a little bit again you need to have a good drawing and then you won't have to to worry too much about the shape and then I'm adding some dark lines there to give it the texture of the pumpkin and add a little bit around the edges and add the stem there and just kind of give it the look of a pumpkin so this is the end of our headless horseman part one series and in part two we're going to work more on the rider and the horse and add in more details so thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.